first time. My name's Jen and today I'm so excited because I'm going to be doing a kind of reading slash writing vlog. Um, I recently started working on a new writing project and I'm so excited about it and I'm just in that planning stage at the moment where I'm thinking about it and dreaming it all up and I just thought it'd be really interesting to share that kind of process and how I come up with story ideas and start writing a novel. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of that in this video, but I'm also going to be reading the Earth Sea series. <laughs> um, there's four books in this one book and I'm, I've been wanting to read this series of books for so long. To me, this is such a classic fantasy series. So I'm really excited to start this book as well and also the weather outside is just so spring it's so sunny and so nice I mean it's cold because it's England but it's sunny and it gives me the feeling of being warm I think I'm going to record this video over the weekend so it's currently Friday and I have Friday and Saturday off this week completely so I have a whole two days to just read and write and do all of the things that I love. So I'm going to share my weekend with you and hopefully see how much of the series that I can read. I want to at least read the first book this weekend, but hopefully I can read a little bit more as well. And I want to get a good chunk of my writing done as well. But before I start reading and writing, Johnny and I are going to be heading out to Mevagissi. There's a really cute secondhand bookshop there and also really great coffee and yeah we're just gonna enjoy the sunshine whilst it's out so I'll take you along for our journey there as well so if you haven't already go grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee um, or a summery drink if it's sunny where you are and you want to feel those spring vibes and yeah I hope you really enjoy this video
about 60 pages into Earthsea or book one, A Wisdom of Earthsea. We start the story in Gaunt, which is a kind of mountainous land and it's kind of known not for strength or warriors or bravery. It's known for pirates and goats. I think goat thieves, they said, um, and kind of fishing and yeah, that sort of thing. So it's not really known for anything incredible and our main character who at the start of the book is referred to as Junie I think um that's how you pronounce it I'm gonna really mess up all of the names in this book um because I do not know how to pronounce them but we start with him as our main character and he is a boy living in Gaunt and he starts to realize that he has these magical abilities and he's kind of taken in by an aunt um, to kind of develop them as much as she can help him with. Then one day this village is attacked and they're all fleeing. None of them are particularly good warriors and there aren't many men in this village either. So they're kind of outnumbered and unlikely to survive. However, Junie manages to kind of use his powers to create this fog or this storm that is kind of distracting the people attacking them so that they can't see the people inside the village. Um, and they said they see this illusion. And so straight away, news of Junie is spread to the other magicians and wizards throughout the land and he becomes a little bit famous as a result. From there, he is met by this great mage whose name I cannot remember. And this mage kind of takes him in as an apprentice to learn his abilities. So yeah, so far, really enjoying it. About 60 pages in and I'm hoping that I can finish the rest of the book today. It's not actually that long, it's like, 200 pages so I might be able to finish it today but I also have some video editing that I need to finish up for a video that's going out tomorrow and I also want to do some writing so I'm going to try and do that for a little bit and then get back to reading later on today.
Hello everyone and welcome back to day two of this reading vlog. I didn't record any more footage yesterday because I read maybe about 20 pages but in between doing the video editing and dinner and catching up with a friend and just other things that came up throughout the day I ended up not really having much time to read so I am gonna try my very best today <laughs> to dedicate as much time as possible to reading this book and at least finish book one. Having slept on it overnight, I am a little bit unsure about how I'm feeling about it so far. I think because there's not a lot of action and not a lot of story in it so far, I'm not particularly gripped by it or hooked in the story at all. However, the world and the character development as well is really interestingly done. So I'm interested, but I'm not that engrossed in it, if that makes sense, which kind of makes me not that excited to pick it back up. But I know that once I do open it and start reading some more, I will like it or I will get into it. So I'm a bit mixed on my opinion so far. Hopefully by the end of the day, I will have changed my mind completely and be absolutely loving it. So yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this goes, but I am now just gonna sit down with my cup of tea and read away. <laughs> very cozy sunny spot on the sofa there's just this one stream of sunlight that comes into this room um, at a certain point in the day <laughs> and it's my favorite thing just nestling into the corner of the sofa where the sun is I am absolutely loving this weather I've read another 30 or so pages of the book I only have about 60 pages left now until the end and I'm feeling pretty much the same about it as I was this morning but the reason that I'm actually reading this book I feel like I should share the reason why I decided to read this book um, is because I'm currently working on a new writing project I've put my other writing project down for a bit to do something else just because I was feeling a little bit I don't know a little bit burned out from the other one and kind of struggling to get into it again so I thought I would just take a break and start writing something else until my love for that other story comes back and a big part of this new writing project is that it's set in or at least part of it is set in a coastal village and so it's a fantasy story set in a coastal village and I really wanted to try and read some other fantasy books that are set in that sort of setting because I've read a lot of books set in forests or fantasy books set in cities and towns and that sort of thing or mountains but I haven't read many set by the sea so I really wanted to read some more books that with that kind of setting which is why I picked up Earthsea and it is definitely giving me a lot of thoughts and inspiration as well as things that I guess just angles that I hadn't really thought about before with this kind of setting which has been really really helpful actually even though I'm not loving the story it's definitely been helpful to get me to think about my own writing in a different way. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of a break now from reading to do some writing. I'm at the stage in my writing at the moment where I'm planning and scribbling down all of my thoughts and I'm trying wherever I can to just grab an hour in a day to or even half an hour just to sit down with no other distractions and 
just write out all my thoughts, write out all my thoughts about a character, write down all of the themes I want to explore, write down little bits of quotes or speech or descriptions of setting, just write down everything that's in my head. I'm one of those people who has who to process things, I have to chuck everything out that I possibly can and then sift through it afterwards to find what the true story is. So yeah, I'm at that stage at the moment and I'm really excited about it. Every time I sit down to do more planning on the story, I get so excited, which I think is a good sign that this is the project I should be working on at the moment. So I'm going to do that for a little bit and show you what I do, well, what I am doing at the moment to plan this story. So when I say I'm at the beginning of planning this book, this is this is the entirety of my notes and thoughts. So I really, really am at the beginning of planning this book. At the moment, I'm writing a list of all of the things that I want to research before I start writing. Um, one of my, I feel like one of my downfalls is that I try to write and then put little notes in into my first draft saying, research this later and then it kind of demotivates me to actually keep writing because I haven't researched the thing so I'm trying with this project to actually research all of the topics that I want to research and then write it afterwards once I have that knowledge so I'm just writing down a list of everything that I can think of might go into this story and putting notes on what exactly I want to find out and learn about it before I write about it. So it is the next day and I am very pleased to report that I have finished A Wizard of Earthsea. I actually finished it last night but I finished it quite late and I was pretty tired and I did not have the energy to string a coherent thread of words together so I decided to sleep on it and film my thoughts the next morning. So here we are. What did I think of 
A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I honestly have so many thoughts. The first thing I want to say about this story is that at first it felt like a very difficult and strange book to read. It's quite jarring at times in the sense that it moves very, very fast with lots of information, but not a lot of story and not a lot of depth. We follow the main character, Ged, from his childhood through his schooling as a wizard, through traveling so many different islands and places and then growing into adulthood and fame as a famous wizard and conquering his inner demons and a lot happens and it's only 200 well less than 200 pages long so as you can imagine it is very very condensed and everything happens very very quickly on the one hand this left me feeling a little bit disconnected from the story i didn't feel like i had enough time to really get to know the characters and to really appreciate them and love them and just be engaged in the story however i feel like it's important to remember and this has been something i've just reflected on really this morning so i'm glad i slept on my my thoughts this book is a legend it is told as if this is a story that's been passed down through hundreds or thousands of years and there are songs about this and myths written about this and as a result i think actually this book was done really really cleverly when you think about a myth or a story told over that long of course it's going to have missed quite a lot of information things will have been told differently over time so some things will lack detail but also they might not quite make sense and there is this element in the story of sometimes the way that Ged goes from an arrogant and hateful young man to a very humble and wise adult it just doesn't quite make sense how that happens but when you think about a legend that's been told of course the hero is going to be glorified the the story is going to have this tinge of unrealness to it and as a result of that, of course, the story isn't going to quite make sense, isn't quite going to have the detail that we want. And we're only going to get the kind of highlights, um, which is what this story does really well. But regardless of how clever I think the book is and how clearly, beautifully and intricately the world is described and unveiled to us, the effect of it as a story, considering as well that this is a children's fantasy story, kind of like, I guess, a similar age audience to Narnia. The story itself is not a very fun read. It often at times feels a little bit boring. And because we're not super connected to that main character, or at least I didn't feel very connected to the main character, I never find myself really caring that much what happens to him. There's also a lot of information dumping at the start of every chapter and a lot of information we're just expected to absorb because it's told to us once rather than shown to us throughout the story, which again, the style of it is that it is like a legend. So I completely understand why that is done, but it again, just doesn't make it a very fun reading experience. However, regardless of that, I feel like as a form of research for my own book that I'm writing, it was really interesting and I learned a lot and I it got me to think about a lot of things in a different way. And so overall, I would say it was a great success of a read for me in that sense. 
So I think I would rate this book three out of five stars, which feels a bit weird because a three star read to me is normally like an average book. And I don't think this is an average book at all. It is clearly so well written. Her writing style has just become one of my favourites and I really want to read more of her work because the way that she writes is so beautiful. Like I just was savouring sentences and writing down so many notes about the way that she describes certain things. So it's not an average book. It's just that my reading experience of it was kind of average. So yeah, three out of five stars, I think. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. And if you've made it to the end, thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope that you are enjoying whatever you're reading right now. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you very soon in the next video.